how should you price your designs? I feel like I've gone through countless of ways of pricing my own art that I thought maybe, just maybe, I can actually help you guys. I've done products from free to like 30K per project from my experience. And pretty much the majority of how I actually got to those prices were vastly different for either one. So let's go ahead and break it down. Also, as per usual, do not forget to check out the Everything Pack. It's the first link in the description down below where you basically all my products, all custom made products by me on my self I page right now, literally all of them on one purchase, plus all future products for free no matter the price forever. So when should you even actually start charging for your work? It's a question I get quite a lot and I'm gonna give you a quick little answer on it. It's, it's definitely gonna be a touchy subject for some, but I would argue you should only start charging when you got the essentials and the basics down. And if you guys are ready to forfeit control of your art. And just for the record, that last one being very important to me, because of course, anyone can start charging on day one of the first time they ever open up Photoshop or their, their design program, maybe without even understanding the basics themselves, but trying to navigate the like conversation territory where you might not be able to actually take a critique or like a, like a client's pain point and actually address it. And that's without even burning out before you even put a pixel to the canvas. However, though, charging a client for me has like three main parts. The first part being able to actually understand the basics and the familiarity with your program to actually accommodate what the client actually wants with changes. While the second part is conversation, where during the project, you're building a relationship and trust on an ongoing project where this third one's probably the most valuable to me and also probably the better one when it comes to actually making moves. And that being timeline and speed. If you could be the guy where someone DMs you, calls you, tweets you, whatever the heck it is, and you respond quick enough for the record, of course, but also get that thing done for them. Yeah. You not only build trust and reliability, but you also remain top of line when positions like a retainer or a contractor position maybe pops up. For the record, retainers meaning they give you like X amount of dollars for X amount of deliverables, usually each month where contracting is pretty much very, very similar, but more or less usually on a project to project basis. So with that though, I might say to you that I'm not sure if you're ready to charge if any of those three points that I brought up just now, it doesn't really register with you yet. And that's okay. Charging as an artist should be not difficult, but at the same time you should be prepared. Let's just say you are prepared and you just have zero clue on how to charge anything. I wanna see if for the record, if you're someone who has like a like a bunch of clients, like a month, but you're just like listening for fun, you, okay, should be charging probably double or even triple what you're charging now, just for the record, which in turn sort of lowers the client intake tunnel, which allows you to, of course, do better work, hopefully that you got more time to work on like a better project while still making the same or even probably more money. So if you're in that scenario, maybe this can still help you out. Trust me, when I when I first, I randomly threw out a number of like a, like $2,000 when I was charging maybe like $300 to $400 ever, mind blown, give it a shot. So first off, let me just give you the standard idea of actually charging based on the amount of work, which in the world of creative, if it's new to you, it's called scope of work, where for many of my beginning years in like the client management system, I, I did literally none of this. Here, let me let me just give you an instance of what you'll get on a DM, okay? Hey, I need a banner, a logo, PSDs of all this stuff, stream layouts, and an alert. Those were my DMs in my first genuine years of charging, where realistically the scope of work would be something like this. A brand identity, like a logo design, right? Social media profiles for all Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, etc. Branding guidelines and assets. Stream starting soon screen, ending screen, stream alerts, stream panels, and I want you're gonna want an emotion design. Now, let me ask you this. Which one of these looks easier to defend when actually talking about pricing? What if you were an emotion designer, but you knew a few people that might be able to help you? You, you probably need budget for that, right? They also may have asked for like an illustration based design. I, I'm not an illustrator, but I know a few, which means I might have to outsource for that as well. All in all, this is kind of where you have a bit of an upper hand when actually navigating that price point. Technically, of course, they can always just say no, and then you just, you just lose out, which is it sucks. Get used to that. Don't just say yes to everything. Jay, can you make it like, like a, like a freaking banner? Don't say yes to everything. Please. Let's just say we charge $1,000 for this scope of work, sort of like in a way, kind of summing up if each of these items on the, like the scope itself was $100, kind of rounds up about $900, add another hundred, cause why not? But regardless, what the client might say is, ooh, I, I don't have enough. That's where you can actually probably start taking work that you didn't even, even for the record, do yet, and taking it out of the scope of work. 
That way you can bring your price down to a workable budget for your client. This is how I'd go about that. I don't know if we can do illustrations, but there are some cool pre-made illustrations that of course aren't custom, but I think still might work. Then we have the motion work. Hey, like if you're not attached to that, we can just kind of remove this. And hey, for the social banners, we'll just do one style and not your five different styles that you were hoping for. And I also work out for us. And now, hey, my new price is $600. Does that work? And then this is the part where they hopefully say, yeah. But now when it's all said and done, you might realize that you just set an expectation for this overall project. And the good part is, is that the expectation was not lowered, it was adjusted and understood. And in other words, leveled what was actually possible in their budget. That of course, it's, it's coming from you as the artist. Nine times out of 10, a client might come to you just because for one, you could be a mutual friend or they just like your work. They came to you for a reason. And what that means is you might have just a little bit more leverage than you might realize the moment they actually ask you for the project they wanted you to work on. That's why, of course, building a strong portfolio or a resume of people that you've actually worked with in the past is incredibly valuable. It helps, of course, convince and comfort the person that's looking to get art created from you. L let me just say this. If you got to hear anything on this entire video, you do not have to lower your prices depending on the actual friends that you might know that does it cheaper or the same price, and you might feel like they're better than you in some kind of way. It's a very natural feeling to have, but let me just say this. You are not competing with them. The only people you are competing with for your potential client is the amount of designers your client actually knows and trusts. And it's not nearly as many as you might think. So as an artist yourself in this very wide range of community that you follow every single day, thousands of people maybe, their circle of artists is, is, is not here. It's probably like, like here. So just take some comfort in that. So was this a long winded video just to like basically introduce scope of works to you and kind of how I would go about it? Maybe. Then your question might be like, hey, Sesho, how did you come up with $100 for each of the items on the list? Well, I would say if I, you know, as myself, as my experience, I'm like 10, 11, almost 12 years deep. Oh my God into design, my hourly rate might be like 40, 50, $60 an hour. And to me on these lists, like a banner design might maybe take me an hour or maybe hour and a half. Same thing for like a few other assets, maybe even less time. So maybe like the logo design may make, maybe take me like five or eight hours of research. Realistically, the logo and the package is crazy. Just saying, I would probably charge incredibly different for that. But all in all, it's, it's, it's a sum of how you feel, right? If you're maybe one or two years in design, maybe you should really only be charging $15 an hour. And if something's gonna take you eight hours, eight times 15, $120, I knew that. I didn't know that, I, I, I was afraid. Then that's what you would do. You would charge 120 bucks, maybe even charge a little bit of a premium because that person, again, went your direction. They chose you. So you can just tag on like a little, you know, a little bonus. For the record, these 30K, 50K, 100, k 300k studios that are charging and all that stuff that comes with a whole different universe you're probably actually competing with other studios and other major designers where you're not even you're not even starting the project yet or, or not even that you haven't even landed on a price yet while there's also three five other studios also competing and then they choose their person. So it gets it gets kind of crazy but with that being said though don't let it deter you from your freelance capabilities. And with that, Sesso HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Let it much love. Peace. And go charge something. But now you maybe have a little bit more of a structure. Communication matters, okay? If you came in with what we kind of talked about today, they'll be like, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. Might know what he's talking about. Let me listen a little bit more, you know, listen a little bit more clearly. Yeah, food for thought. I'll see you guys later. Peace.